Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos here, and we are learning our last section of chapter six. And today we're continuing to learn about vectors, and specifically we're going to learn one skill about vectors, and that's going to be how we multiply two vectors together. So far we've just explored scalar multiplication, which is when we multiply a number or a constant by a vector, and we just kind of distributed that. Today we're going to examine what do we do if I'm multiplying a vector times a vector. So when we are finding what we call the dot product, that's when we're multiplying two vectors together, we're going to multiply their first values together. And so this is really going to like represent the product of those x values. And then we're going to add it to the product of the second value, which kind of represents like the y values. And a key thing for us to remember when we're dealing with dot product is that our answer should always be a number. It's not an ordered pair, it's not component form. Our answer is going to be a number in this case. So we're gonna practice finding the dot product a lot today. Um, the other thing we need to know is that vectors are what we call orthogonal, and that really is like being perpendicular if their dot product is equal to zero. Okay, so as I said before, today we're going to be finding a ton of dot products, and what you're going to find is our math today is going to be really easy. The key thing is for us to remember how to actually figure out what the dot product is. Okay, so number one tells us that vector u is 3i plus 2j, so we know that's like 3, 2, and vector v is i minus j, which is like 1, negative 1, and it says we need to find the dot product between those two. So if I'm doing u dot v, I'm going to multiply their x values together, so the 3 and the 1, and then add it to the product of the y values. So plus 2 times negative 1. So I would get 3 plus negative 2, which is 1. So one would be our answer, and that's all we would need to do with that. Okay, number two looks somewhat complicated because it says that vector v is just i. So we need to remember that it is like i, j. So my x coefficient, that i coefficient that represents x is one. Since I don't have a j, it's like it is zero. Vector w is two, negative three. So if I'm finding v dot w, I'm going to multiply their x values, so 1 times 2, plus the product of their y values, so 0 times negative 3. So I end up getting 2 plus 0, which is 2. Okay, so hopefully we're seeing this is pretty straightforward. The key thing is memorizing the formula. Okay, number three, this time vector u is 0, 3. Where did this 0 come from? It came from the fact that I don't have an i value. So it's like 0i. Okay, and then vector v is 7, 1. So if I'm finding the dot product of those two, I would do 0 times 7, because those are our x values, plus our y values, which are 3 and 1, so plus 3 times 1, I get 0 plus 3, which is 3. Hopefully at this point this is seeming a little bit repetitive, and that's a good thing because that means that you're getting it. Okay, number 4 looks scary because we have fractions, but vector u is 2, negative 2, vector v is 1 half, 1 half. So if I'm finding the dot product between those two, I would do 2 times 1 half plus negative 2 times 1 half. So I would get 1 plus negative 1, which is 0. So we would just say that our answer is 0. We don't need to say they're orthogonal because it's not asking us that in the question. Um, 0 is a perfectly fine answer. Number five, all of a sudden we get to something kind of strange. It says find the angle theta between vectors 
v equals 3i plus 2j and w equals 7i minus j. We've spent a lot of time um, determining what the angle or what the direction angle is of a vector. Um, what this is really testing out, and I'm just going to sketch this for us. Okay, I know 3, 2 would be something like this because it's going to the right 3 and up 2. 7, negative 1 means it's going to the right 7 and down 1, so something like that. We're finding this angle in between those two vectors. So there is a formula that we need to memorize. Just kidding, we don't need to memorize it. I'm going to give this to you on the test. Uh, but we need to know how to use it. So our formula is cosine of theta is equal to the dot product of u and v divided by the product of the magnitudes. So there's just a lot of information going on here. There's a lot of stuff um, that we need to know and that we just need to figure out. And we've spent a lot of time with vectors finding all these components. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite that vector v is 3, 2, and vector w is 7, negative 1. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is figure out what is the dot product. So I would do 3 times 7 plus 2 times negative 1, and I end up getting 19. So off to the side here, Okay, I'm going to write cosine of theta equals 19. The next thing I need to find is the, the magnitude of v. I know the magnitude squared equals 3 squared plus 2 squared. So I get the magnitude squared equals 13. So the magnitude equals radical 13. So I'm going to go ahead and write radical 13 down here. Then lastly, I need to figure out what is the magnitude of W. Okay, so that would be 7 squared plus negative 1 squared. So I get the magnitude of W squared equals 50. And this is when something, um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Normally, I would write radical 50 as 2, uh, I'm sorry, as 5 radical 2. But since we're putting this in our calculator, it actually becomes easier if I put it in my calculator as the square root of 13 times 50 down in the denominator. Okay, I can go ahead and since I'm multiplying radical 13 times radical 50, I can just go ahead and write it under the same square root and just write those two values. We're not simplifying it in simplified radical form here. I'm, I need to determine what is my angle. So what I'm going to do to actually solve for our angle then, I need to do cosine inverse 19 divided by the square root of 13 times 50. And I get that that angle is 41 8 degrees. Now, if I look back at my picture here, even though this is not like to scale by any means, 41.8 seems like a reasonable answer for those two vectors. So, key thing with this formula is this will be given to you on any test um, or on any quiz. Um, so, you just need to know how do I use this, how, what do I need to do in order to find those little specific things that we substitute in. Number six is another find the angle theta between those two vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to write that vector u is 2, 3. and vector v is 7, negative 1. So once again, our formula is cosine theta equals the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. The reason why we don't do a dot product on the bottom is the magnitude is a number, so we can just multiply those numbers together. 
So first piece, and it really doesn't matter what we find first, but um, I'm going to find the dot product first here. So I have 2 times 7 plus 3 times negative 1. So 14 minus 3 becomes 11. When I find the magnitude of u, I'm going to say the magnitude of u squared equals 2 squared plus 3 squared. Remember, I'm getting this from the Pythagorean theorem. So I have 4 plus 9, which is 13. So I get that the magnitude is radical 13. For vector v, I have 7 squared plus negative 1 squared. So I end up getting that this is 50, so the magnitude is radical 50. So when I actually substitute stuff in here, I'm going to say cosine of theta equals 11 over the square root of 13 times 50. So I'm going to put cosine inverse into my calculator, and I get 64.4 degrees. Number seven is asking us to do the same thing here. So um, I'm going to start by just writing vector v as 2, negative 3, and vector u as 1, 1. So if I am finding the dot product of those two, I have 2 times 1 plus negative 3 times 1. So 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. The magnitude of v, and, and by the way, notice on this, this time I switched the order of these two. That's fine, the dot product. Um, we would say it's commutative. The order doesn't matter if it's u dot v or v dot u. We get the same answer. Okay, the magnitude of v squared would be 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. So I get the magnitude squared equals 4 plus 9, which is 13. So the magnitude equals radical 13. The magnitude of u squared would be 1 squared plus 1 squared. So I get the magnitude of u squared equals 2. So the magnitude equals radical 2. So if I'm actually putting this into the formula, cosine of theta equals negative 1 over the square root of 13 times 2. We could also write that as the square root of 26 if we wanted. And when I put that into my calculator, I get theta equals 101.3 degrees. And if we sketched out those two vectors, we would see that that angle between them does look like it should be an obtuse angle, so this answer makes sense. Okay, um, finding the angle between vectors does not get more difficult than this. It really is just repetition, and notice how important it is that we know how to find dot product and information from the previous lessons. Number eight's a little bit different. It asks us which of the following pairs of vectors are orthogonal. And just a reminder, that means that the dot product is equal to zero. So we're going to have to go ahead and explore these. So this first one, okay, I would do 3 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times 2. Negative 3 plus negative 4, I'm not going to get zero. So I don't really care what the answer is then. Isn't that a good outlook on life? Just look for the answer. Okay. But in this case, I know it's not option A, and that's really all that matters. Okay, for B, I'm going to do negative 2 times 0 plus 0 times 5, and I notice that we get 0 as our answer. So in this case, I would say that B is our answer. Now, it really doesn't um, state that there's only one option here, so I... For time's sake here, I'm going to actually find all of them. Not for time's sake. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, I'm just going to find all of them, but on the test, if you had a question like this, obviously there would just be one answer. So here I would get 1 plus negative, or I'm sorry, 0 plus negative 1. That is not orthogonal. 
Okay, and then this next one I'm going to do 2 times negative 2 plus negative 3 times 3. I can already see this is not going to give me 0 either. So B is our only answer. I think that's pretty straightforward, so we're going to skip 9. And we're going to move straight to 10 here. Okay, number 10, it's asking us uh, about that angle between U and V, but this time it's actually giving it to us. And they're asking us to find a different piece of information. So I'm just going to remind us our formula, which this formula will always be given to us, is cosine of theta equals the dot product divided by the product of the magnitudes. Now, when we used this earlier, we used it to find the angle, but this time they tell us the angle is pi over 3, and they tell us what both of these magnitudes are. What they don't tell us is the dot product, so that's what we are solving for here. So, when I go ahead and put everything in here, I'm going to say cosine of 60 degrees, because I know pi over 3 is equivalent to 60 degrees, equals the dot product. And I'm going to treat this like it's x. Okay, that's my unknown value. Even though we have two different variables there, that's what I'm finding for, that whole quantity. Okay, divided by the product of the magnitudes, which were 8 and 12. So I have cosine of 60 degrees equals u dot v divided by 96. So to isolate my unknown value, I'm going to multiply both sides by 96. Um, I know that the cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. And I'm getting that off of our special angles, our special triangles that we all have memorized. Um, if you put that into your calculator, you would also get that answer, but we should know how to do that exactly. And 96 times 1 half is 48. So 48 would be our dot product. So this is just another way for us to go ahead and find um, what the dot product is, and another way for us to use that formula. Okay, so number 11, super similar. We're trying to find the dot product, and they give us the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v, and the angle is pi over 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write cosine. I know pi over 4 is like 45 degrees, equals u dot v divided by 7 times 12. I know that the cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. 7 times 12, well, let me think about it here, is 84. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 84. And so if I multiply 84 times radical 2 over 2, I get 42 radical 2 is equal to our dot product. Okay, so our actual math itself, not that tough, but what does get a little bit complicated is we're just throwing in a bunch of information um, from previous lessons that we've learned. Okay, and we're actually going to skip number 12. Um, I'm never going to ask you if vectors are parallel um, you, you definitely need to know if they're orthogonal, um, and that's if it's zero. And we would just say it's orthogonal or it's not orthogonal, and that's enough information for us. So this is definitely a quick overview on um, vectors. If you look in your book or if you're in physics, there's a lot of applications um, that we're not going to quite get into. But hopefully um, you're feeling good on how to find the dot product and how to use the formula that I'm giving to you that enables you to find the angle between vectors.